In this video, we will demonstrate the Responsive Events module where members can view, register, edit, and cancel registrations from the website. By default, the Event Calendar tab will display the current month with Search and Filter options. Click in the Search Event Name box and start typing. The calendar will start searching events with the match as you type. Notice the event on the 6. Type the word golf and the event disappears. Click the X beside golf to clear the word search. Next we have filter options. Click on the word filter to show or hide additional options. To better demonstrate this section, we're going to zoom out of this view so that we can see the filters and the calendar at the same time. The calendar can be displayed in three views, month, week, and list. Right now we're going to demonstrate the filters using the month view. Registration status filter by default is showing all events. This includes information only events and registration. If you are only interested in events that allowed registration, click Registrable Only. This next filter, Show Event Time, is only available provided your club has enabled this feature, and it only affects the month view. If you're in the week or list view, the times will always show. If you do not want the time to display, click on this filter and select No. Now it only shows the name of the event. Booking Types is only available if your club has enabled this feature. It will display other modules such as tea times, courts, dining, or lessons, all within your calendar module, provided your club has those modules. Locations are the types of locations your club has created where events can take place. Click on the locations and you will see that there's check marks for all the locations currently because we have opted to show all locations. Click on the check mark again and all the options have now been disabled. As you can see, our weekly social has disappeared. Click on Clubhouse and any events that are taking place in the Clubhouse will now reappear. Let's click all locations again. Categories are listing all the different types of categories of events that the club has created. Again, the check mark indicates that all the categories are selected right now. You can click on all categories to deselect. Now you can click on the categories that you are interested in. The only difference between locations and categories is that the categories can be color coded if your club would like to easily identify a particular type of event on the calendar. So let's click on a la carte dining and there's our weekly social dining again. Yes, by default, the events are showing all types of events. If you're only interested in events which allow or do not allow guests, then you can select those accordingly. Let's choose no guests. The social event disappears. Birthdays is a feature that is only enabled if your club has allowed the birthday features to be displayed for all members to see, and if they wanted birthdays to be part of the event calendar. Most clubs actually choose to hide this filter altogether. Gender, if you are interested in finding events that are only for males or females, provided your club has created gender specific events. If you've clicked around on the filters too much and you want to reset the filters back to the original, which usually displays everything, click on the reset button on the right here. To hide the filter options, click on the filter button up at the top. The sync option will allow you to download an ICS file to synchronize the event calendar to your personal calendar. Click select month year to display upcoming months and years. Use the right arrow to choose a future year or simply click on a month. From here, you can use the right and left arrows to go to future or past months, or you can click on the current month button found on the right to bring you back. 
Now let's discuss the three views you can choose from to see the events. Month, week, and list. The difference between the view is the amount of information and how it is displayed. All views will display a circle with a color provided the club has identified a color for a category. It will have a time provided the club has enabled the time feature. Please note in the week and list view, the times will always display and it will show the end time as well. And it will display the event name. Note in the week and list view, it will actually show the full event name. In addition, the event may also have additional icons that are found at the top here in the legend. The green check mark indicates that you've already registered for an event. The clock icon is for popular events that have filled up, but you can add yourself to a waitlist. And the red circle with the strike through indicates for a popular event that the event is full and you cannot register. Let's zoom our page back to 100% and take a look at some of these legend icons. Here we can see the green check mark, the clock icon, and the red circle with the strike through. Instead of the time being displayed, some events may have the following. The word multi, if the event has more than one registration time. No time if the event does not have any specific time. And for events that are going to take up the entire day, you may see the word all day. On busy days, you may not be able to view all the events taking place on that date from the month view. Instead, you'll have the number and the link for more. Click on the number and more and it will display all the events that are taking place on that date. You can click from here to see the event details or click the X to close the window. Now let's scroll back up to the top to switch to the week view. Click on week, and now it will only show events that are coming up in the current week. Use the left or right arrows to see previous or future weeks. You can always use the current week button to bring you back to the current week. In the week view, it will show all the events that are taking place within the next seven days, and it will display the start and end time along with the full name of the event, listing all activities within that date below. Let's click on the list view. The list view also provides the left and right arrows to see past or future events. And once you click that, you can click on today and it will bring you back to the current month and scroll to the section where events taking place today will be displayed. What's different in the list view is in addition to all the information we've seen in both the month and the week view, you now have the ability to see the location of where the event is taking place as well. It is possible for events to take place in more than one location, as you see here. What's also nice about the list view is if any events have been set up as registration events, you'll easily identify it with the register button on the right of the event. Before you register for an event, you may want to see more details about the event by clicking on the event name. This can be done from any of the three calendar views. Let's scroll down to the ladies fitness class to see details. In the event details screen, you will find info about the event on the left. This includes the name of the event, the date, the time, and location. More info will only appear if applicable for the event. In here, you will find things such as age, gender, and guest restrictions, pricing for early bird and regular pricing, and cancellation policy if this event has one. Please note, pricing is for information only purposes. 
payment will not be processed on the website. Others attending will allow you to see other members that have already registered for this event. This will only be available if the club has enabled the others attending feature. On the right hand side, you will find text, images, and links with additional information about the event. Let's scroll back up to the top. And here we can find the left arrow to go back to the event calendar or click on register to sign up for the event. On the registration screen, you'll find on the left hand side the same event details. And on the right hand side, you will find the booking information. Since you are logged into the website, you will be in the first registrant spot by default. Choose a registrant category. The category can have one or multiple options to choose from. Note, not all events will have pricing information. If it did, it will automatically total for you on the top right hand corner. Reminder, the price is for information purposes only and you will not be making any payments from the website. Your club will communicate with you payment options separately. Registration events can be set up in a few ways. One, named registrants. Two, unnamed registrants. Three, both. Named and unnamed registrants can be added in the same event. This event allows both. First, we are going to demonstrate three ways a named registrant can be added, starting with add a member. Type the first or last name of the member you wish to add. Click on their name. And they're now added as the second registrant. You will have to choose the registrant category for them if the default one is not correct. If you selected the wrong member, you can click the X beside the name to remove them. Let's add a guest. Type in the first name. If you hit add, it won't let you continue until you add a last name. Type in a last name. Email address is optional. It is used to send your guest an email confirmation upon completing the registration. This will only be sent provided your club has enabled email confirmations. Select the registrant category for your guest. Now let's add a buddy or group. Buddies and groups is a list of members that you hang out on a regular basis. You would have preset from the Manage Buddies and Groups tab your favorite people. So instead of having to type their names in every time you register for an event, you can easily select them from a list. Let's click on Joy. Now that we've selected the named registrants, and you can see Joy has been added, let's show you how to add the unnamed registrants. Unnamed registrant is simply a headcount so that the club easily knows how many people are coming and they don't necessarily need the names of every single person that is attending. All you have to do is click on the plus or minus sign to indicate the number of people for the appropriate registrant categories. At the bottom there is a request notes section. If you scroll down here you'll see a text box where you can type in additional notes for the club to be aware of. You can click continue to proceed with the registration or you can go back up to the top and see how many registrants you've currently selected for this event with the booking registrants. On the left you'll have the arrow to go back to the event details or on the right you'll be able to see the total if pricing was part of this event or you can click continue from here as well. Now this registration screen you see is optional. It is presented because the club is choosing to ask you additional questions before you complete your registration. If your event did not have additional questions, you would have seen this complete button on the previous screen already. Questions that your club may ask you can be presented in two ways. 
They can be multiple choice questions, as we see here. And it's asking if you've participated in the challenge before. The drop down is a simple yes or no. It is marked with the red asterisk, so any questions that have this indicate they are mandatory and you do have to answer the question, otherwise it will not allow you to complete the registration. You'll be able to answer these questions for anybody that had a name. The other type of question that can be asked is a simple question where you can type your answer in a text box. Once you're done answering all the questions for all the named registrants, you will still have the request notes box. So if you did not type any notes in the previous screen, but you do want to type something now, you can, or you can leave it blank. Click on complete to complete your registration. You've now completed your booking for the ladies fitness class. You know that because of the little check mark in the booking completed message. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see your event details on the left hand side, including your confirmation number. On the right hand side, you will have the ability to update your booking, meaning you can add or remove any members that you've added. You can cancel the booking. Maybe you chose the wrong date and time, you have to cancel it out completely. You can send an email separately to any guests that did not get the email confirmation, or you can view in my bookings. If you do not click on view in my bookings from here and you go back out to the calendar, there's different ways for you to view the event. My bookings allows you to see any upcoming events that you have already registered for, and from there, you'll be able to update or cancel as well. Let's go back to the calendar by clicking the event calendar tab up at the top and switch to the month view. Here, if we uh, search for ladies, and scroll down, we'd be able to see the green check mark beside the ladies event that we just signed up for. We also have the ability to click on the event. From here, you can see the event details or cancel and update. The My Bookings tab is also found on the top. When you click on it, you'll be able to easily view the event details, edit or cancel the registration. For more details on how to manage the My Booking section, there will be another video called My Bookings. Manage Buddies and Groups. The Manage Buddies and Groups section will easily allow you to add members and guests to a list so that you can easily access it when registering for events. For more details on how to manage your buddies and groups, please watch the Manage Buddies and Groups video. When you're done managing your buddies and groups, you can always go back to your events with this left arrow. Responsive Events has a built-in wait list if the club has enabled this feature. So if we scroll down to a popular event, we'll be able to see our winemaking class is already on waitlist mode. So instead of registering for the event, you can click on winemaking to see the event details. And instead of registering for the event, the button is now called Add to Waitlist. Follow the same steps as you did in the registration events and then complete your registration. If you don't want to register, then you can use the left arrow to go back or click on Event Calendar. And that concludes the Responsive Events video. Thank you for watching.